Hello friends, welcome to episode 55, the double nickel edition of Fun With Cheese. Never did I think um, 55 days ago when we first started this thing with the individually wrapped string cheese uh, that we would be sitting here at day 55. You always wonder why is he wearing a hat? I'm wearing a hat because it's Mother's Day and I needed to have a nice hat because the other hat I had was a little bit rattered and tattered and my wife didn't want me appearing on live Facebook with an old ratty hat. But this is the reason why I wear the hat. Um, today's episode is, a uh, friend of the episode is a salute to moms and you know that today is Mother's Day and Mother's Day is one of those special days where we reach out to our moms and tell them how much we appreciate them. Sometimes we reach out to them in the morning and make them breakfast in bed. And yesterday I mentioned about cheese curds and having to reheat those things and always getting moms some cheese and, and things like that, showing her appreciation of moms. Um, I'm coming to you because, or from the uh, kitchen of the non-venison bunker. This is where no venison processing gets done. This is where it gets cooked, but no raw venison meets this area. And this was the place this morning that some magic happened. And as I was looking last night, I went online to wisconsincheese.com, which is the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin official site. It has a lot of different recipes and wonderful things. And they had recipes that even this guy can make. And so my salute to mothers this morning and my salute to my wife, the mother of my three children, um, today was making two kinds of quiche. And uh, a quiche, for those of you who think it's something crazy, it's a French word for baked omelet. Okay, get over it. It's just a baked omelet. And uh, it's so easy. Four steps to making quiche. I marked it up a little bit uh, and I'll explain how I did that but the four steps are as such and I made a spinach in Swiss but I put a little twist on it um, first of all you need to heat your oven to 350 so start that we went over there and started that got it going up to 350 then I took out my trusty blender because I'm not a guy who likes to whisk stuff so this is a Vita Plus that I got many many years ago from my sister for a wedding present and it does wonders. So I broke four eggs, or I'm sorry, not four eggs, eight eggs in here. Where do you get the eggs from? Well, we got them from the Knoyer Chicken Ranch right here. Um, those of you who don't know, if you're out buying chickens and thinking that you're going to turn uh, your chickens into egg layers in two weeks, it doesn't happen that quick. Got to give it at least six months if you're starting with chicks. Um, those chickens will produce one egg per day. So you'll get 30 to 31 to 28 somewhere in that range of eggs per month they're not going to kick out two a day sometimes you might get a double yoker sometimes i've even seen a triple yoker but that's not the norm um, so you're going to need eight eggs you're going to need three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream three quarters of a cup of weber's or whatever you want to have, 2% or whole milk. We get two all the time, so that's what we're looking at. Um, a teaspoon of salt and pepper each. And then we broke out the old cheese grater because they don't sell Appenzeller, which is our cheese of the day. This is a, the, our cheese I'm going to talk about, in a Sargento bag where they shred it. They might find Swiss or something like that, but I broke out the old cheese grater. Um, and then I put that all into the blender along with a cup and a half of uh, baby spinach and hit pulse for about 15 seconds, blended that all together, and then I put it into my pre-greased, which is a huge thing, you need to pre-grease the pie plate, um, pie plate. And then I put it in the oven for 45 minutes. Now, cheeses like Swiss and Appenzeller, which are a melting cheese that people use them for fondue, uh, we find find that out. That it's sometimes we have to bake them a little longer at a higher temperature in order to get this to set. I talked to my quiche guru, Mr. Joel Keenhold, who told me that uh, if your quiche isn't setting up, you bake it. Maybe pump the temperature up to about 400 at that very end. Get it to puff, and this thing will puff up. Oh, about it got 
even to the top here and then as it cooled it shrunk down um, and if you're still not happy with it take your slice out after it cools pop in the microwave for about 35 seconds and that'll put the final bake on there and give you a nice warm touch and and get that ready to go but this was a spinach and appenzeller quiche now the other one I made was kojak and bacon which I shredded the bacon and broke the bacon up put that in there along with the kojak and some onion and things like that turned out phenomenal you're wondering why is my quiche brown well cheese remember it has sugar in it lactose and we add heat to that it starts to caramelize just like a marshmallow and so when we have that in there just like our cheese curds and we fry those and things like that you're gonna find that caramelization and that's just caramelized sugar on top of the crust here and you can see that it turned out pretty awesome so made that for Mother's Day and knocked it out of the park my kids even liked it so what the heck is Appenzeller, do you ask? Well, this was a three quarter pound wedge of Appenzeller. And you can see that it has a silver label. Appenzeller cheese is made in the Appenzell region of Switzerland. And it is only made in Switzerland. There's only a place in, I think, 75 places throughout the world that make it, but Appenzeller, Switzerland, is where it got its start. Uh, originally, this cheese was only made by grazed brown Swiss cows. Remember those crazy Europeans have these special rules that they have. In order to call it Appenzeller, it has to come from brown Swiss cows that are grazed, non-silage fed cows, and it is a smear ripened hard cheese. This silver label on here tells me that this is a relatively young Appenzeller. It has a fruity nutty flavor used a lot in fondues and things like that. But Appenzeller is uh, very Swiss-like. And that's the reason I use it with my Swiss and, and uh, spinach quiche that I made. Because I, had, I didn't have any regular Swiss sitting around, so I figured I'm going to use this. It worked. It's wonderful. Uh, it's made, it's a gourmet cheese. This silver label tells me that this is three months. If I go gold label, that's going to be four to six. If I go black label, that's even more than six months. And so um, I cut this off and I grated it with this guy use him if you're going to be doing fresh stuff right away it goes across here like this spits the cheese out and it's a wonderful thing um it we call this an alpine cheese because it's by the alps and in switzerland a lot of those cheeses in there they refer to them as alpine cheese light tan color and a slightly pungent aroma the cheese is washed with a special mixture of herbs wine and salt yum and so Appenzeller is one of the three classic fondue cheeses, but it's fine also as a table cheese with fruit and crackers. And since it easily melts, you can always make it as a Swiss grilled cheese. So that's our fun for the day. Appenzeller cheese, silver label, gold label, or black label. And it's a Swiss made cheese. Um, if we're going to go real crazy with it, you can take tours in Switzerland of the place that actually makes it at that actual factory. They're real hip on what they do. Um, happy Mother's Day. Check out WisconsinDairy.com. Look for the recipes. They're that simple. This one was four steps. Even this guy was able to turn it out and make it awesome and even put a smile on my wife's face with me cooking that early in the morning. Um, please don't forget your cooking spray in those and those crustless quiches uh, that makes everything peel out that much easier that's it for day 55 i'm glad you're able to join us happy mother's day to you all and we'll see you tomorrow for day 56 of fun with cheese <laughs>